student scholars in association with Goa Headmasters Association. Hello everyone. Welcome you to this class. In today's session, we will discuss the lesson Nelson Mandela, A Long Walk to Freedom, Part 2. Students, before we start with the reading part of this lesson, let us have a recap of what we learned in the last session. I hope that you all have read the lesson that we learned in the last class. In South Africa, from 1948 to 1994, there was a system called apartheid. What is apartheid? Apartheid was a political system that segregated the people on the basis of the color of their skin. And so, in South Africa, there were two races, the white and the black. And the white ruled the black. The black were their slaves. They were given inhuman treatment. And this went on for about 46 years. And after a brutal struggle and extraordinary human disaster, finally, in 1994, the free and democratic elections were held in South Africa. And Nelson Mandela's African National Congress Party won the elections. And they formed the government in the country that was the first time in the history of South Africa. The inaugural ceremony took place on 10th May, 1994. And where was this inaugural ceremony? It took place in the lovely sandstone amphitheater in Pretoria. And many international distinguished leaders were present for this ceremony. There was a rainbow gathering of different colors. During the oath ceremony, what did Nelson Mandela pledge to his country? He pledged to obey and uphold the constitution and to work for the well-being of his people. In his speech, he promised the people to liberate them from what? from continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, sufferings, and gender and other discrimination. After the end of the ceremony, there was a military show. The military officers came flying in the jets, leaving the trail of smoke of different colors that symbolized the South Africa's national flag. The ceremony ended with singing of two national anthems, the white and the black. Now, why do you think two national anthems were sung during the ceremony? To show equality. Nelson Mandela's government was democratic and non-racial. So students, we also learned in the last part, what is courage? Can you tell me what is courage? According to Mandela, courage is not the absence of fear, but a triumph over it. Man's goodness is a flame that cannot be extinguished. This is what we learned in the first part of the lesson, and that brings us to the reading part of the second, that is today's part. Okay, students? Students, I hope you have the textbooks with you all. So let us start with the reading of the first paragraph of this lesson. In life, every man has twin obligations. 
obligation to his family, to his parents, to his wife and children. And he has an obligation to his people, his community and his country. In a civil and human life, every man tries to fulfill these twin obligations according to his own inclinations and abilities. But in a country like South Africa, it was almost impossible for a man of my birth and color to fulfill both of those obligations. In South Africa, a man of color who attempted to live as a human being was punished and isolated. In South Africa, a man who tried to fulfill his duty to his people was inevitably ripped from his family and his home and was forced to live a life apart, a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion. I did not in the beginning choose to serve my people or place my people above my family. But in attempting to serve my people, I found that I was prevented from fulfilling my obligations as a son, as a brother, a father, and a husband. So students, according to Nelson Mandela, there are twin obligations that every man has to fulfill. What do you understand by twin obligations? Twin means two. An obligation means a responsibility, a duty. And what are these twin obligations? The first is towards the family. As a husband, as a father, as a son. And second obligation is towards his country, towards his people, towards his community. And in normal life, every man tries to fulfill this or he tries to keep a balance between these two. But in South Africa, it was not easy. If a man of color, he tried to live like a human being, he was punished, he was isolated. And if he came out to serve the society, he was ripped away from his family. He was made to live a life apart from his family. So, they were prevented from fulfilling, fulfilling both the obligations. The phrase here, twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion. What does that phrase tell us? Do you know the meaning of the word twilight? Twilight is a half light or a semi-darkness. The light it appears just before the morning or just immediately after the evening. And do you know what this part of the day is called? The part before the morning is called a dawn and the part after, immediately after the evening, it is called dusk. At this point, sun is below the horizon. So that is the meaning of the word twilight. But if we consider the phrase twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion, in this context, in the context of the lesson, what does it mean? You know, people in South Africa were not allowed to live freely. Their life was like a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion. If he tried to live freely, he was arrested. He was considered a rebel. So he had to hide from the government authorities or get imprisoned. So this was how the people in South Africa, the black colored people were living. It was just a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion. And in the beginning, Nelson Mandela did not choose to place his country above the people, above his own family. But later on, he became hungry for freedom. He wanted to work for his society. 
and then he had to compromise his family. He could not serve his obligation as a father, as a son, as a husband, or any family member. Students, this is the content part of this lesson, or I mean this paragraph. But I would like to draw your attention to the punctuation marks that are being used in this lesson. There are a number of punctuation marks here. A dash, commas, there's a semicolon, full stop. Punctuation marks are very important in writing. And when we read, when we speak, we have to speak with these punctuation marks so that we are able to reach to our listeners meaningfully. Now the first punctuation mark, what is it called? Is it a hyphen? No, it's a dash. It's a dash. It's one of the punctuation marks. You know, in grammar, there are 14 punctuation marks. And dash is one of them. Now, what is the difference between this dash and hyphen? Hyphen is smaller than dash. And you see, before and after the dash, there's a space. And dash connects the two clauses. And a hyphen connects to two words. They bring, hyphen brings the two words together. So this is one of the punctuation mark that you see here. Then there is a semicolon. When, you have, when we have two dots, it's called colon. And one dot and comma is called semicolon. Semicolon joins or combines the two clauses. Then we have comma, which is a pause, which is a soft pause. We just pause there for a while. And full stop is where the sentence gets over. A new sentence begins. And one more punctuation mark, which I would like to stress here, is the apostrophe. The word is pronounced as apostrophe. Apostrophe. It's written like this. Apostrophe. And you know how this mark is written? The mark is written this way. A comma up. And when do we use this apostrophe? There's a lot of confusion as to when to use it. It is used to show possession. Apostrophe is used to show possession and sometimes contraction or omission. If I want to say, this is Rama's chalk. So chalk is the possession of Rama. So that we write it like this. We write it as Rama's pen. If we have to add apostrophe for the plural noun, like children, we still use apostrophe symbol and yes. Am I clear? But if there is a noun, plural noun, which ends with S, parents, it's a parent's possession, all the parents' possession, then we just add the apostrophe at the end of the word. No yes is written there. So this is how we mark the apostrophe. And also we mark the apostrophe to show the contraction. For example, this is a contraction. What are we doing here is we are omitting a letter, a letter or two. Now what is the full form of this is do not. But we have contracted it. There are many examples like haven't, can't, wouldn't, aren't. So these are the two cases where we use 
the apostrophe. Many a times I find the children making mistake. They say, all that glitters is not gold. All that glitters is not gold. Now the word glitters is a verb. They write it this way. We cannot write glitters this way because glitter is a verb in a present tense. So all that glitters should be written this way. All that glitters is not gold. Okay, students, so I hope I'm clear with you all. Many times we make mistakes. There are some nouns which are used in plural. Boys are playing. And sometimes we use apostrophe here. Is it right? No? This is plural now. Only when we're showing possession, we use apostrophe. I hope I'm clear to you. Okay. So this was a grammar point that I wanted to teach you in this paragraph. Now let us move on to the next paragraph of the lesson. Before we move on to the next paragraph, I have some vocabulary for you all. There are some words. They may be there on your textbooks. Obligation, a duty or commitment. Civil is courteous and polite. Inclination is natural tendencies of behavior. Inevitably is unavoidably. Twilight, I explained you, secrecy, rebellion. So these are the words, students, that you should have in your vocabulary list. Add them to your vocabulary list. As I told you earlier, that strong vocabulary makes you a strong, makes your command over the language strong, okay? So this is the vocabulary part of this paragraph. So should we move on to the next para? Students, I hope you all are in track with me and are reading along with me. It's very much essential. I was born with a hunger to be free. I was born free. Free in every way that I could know. Free to run in the fields near my mother's hut. Free to swim in the clear stream that ran through my village. Free to roast millies under the stars and ride the broad backs of the moving bulls. As long as I obeyed my father and abided by the customs of the tribe, I was not troubled by the law of man or God. It was only when I began to learn that my boyhood freedom was an illusion. When I discovered as a young man that my freedom had already been taken from me, that is the time I began to hunger for it. At first, as a student, I wanted freedom only for myself. The transitory freedom of being able to stay out at night, read what I pleased, and go wherever I chose. Later, a young man in Johannesburg, I yearned for the basic and honorable freedom of achieving my potential, of earning my keep, of marrying and having a family, the freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life. I have combined these two paragraphs here. There's a purpose behind that. Because these two paragraphs are telling us about Nelson Mandela's understanding of freedom at various stages of his life. As a boy, or during his boyhood, he was free, just like any child. He was free to run here and there. He was free to swim in the stream. He was free to roast the millies. Millies means, actually it's a maize plant, but here we can take it as a corn. He was free to ride on the backs of the bulls. He was free. There was no, any curtailment of his freedom. But later on, he realized that his boyhood freedom was just an illusion. It was not real at all. He realized that they were not given freedom. He began to realize this, that the freedom from all the black, from all the dark-skinned people was taken away. Then he started craving for the freedom. As a student, as a young man, 
What freedom did Nelson Mandela want? He wanted the freedom for himself, for him alone. A transitory freedom of staying out at night or to read what he pleased or to go where he chose, wherever he wanted. That was a transitory freedom. What is transitory? Transitory means it was just permanent, uh, I mean temporary. And then later, in his later life, he craved for the basic and honorable freedom. The freedom that brings honor to one's life. And what was the freedom? The freedom that cannot be denied to anyone by the country. Law gives freedom to everyone this, to achieve the honor. That was to show his capabilities, to show his potential, to earn his livelihood, to marry and to have a family. But it was not easy in South Africa. So the people with dark skin had to struggle for it. They were yearning for it. They were longing for it to have this freedom. Now, why have I joined these two paragraphs? You know, paragraph writing is very important in language. Paragraphs elaborate a particular point. No matter, you may have lots of very good, fantastic ideas in your article, but you have not organized it properly. Then your article is failed. You know, students, in my last experience, I'll tell you, in the SEC board corrections, there was a student who had scored the highest marks, about 72 in out of 80. And you know, this student had written the article, the fantastic article, very, very impressive article, but it was written in one single pair. And you know how many marks he was allotted? Just two out of eight. And I was feeling bad about it, you know, the ideas, the proverbs, the phrases, idioms. He had written fantastic essay, fantastic article, but because he had not organized his points, he lost the marks. So paragraphs start with a new idea. And that's why I took these two paragraphs together because they're stressing the Nelson Mandela's understanding of freedom, both the paragraphs. So keep students, keep, keep in mind that paragraph writing is very important in articles that will help you to score good marks. Okay? Now, if you go to see the difficult the vocabulary here, we have the word stream. You all must be knowing this word. It's a very common word. Stream is a small, narrow river. Have you all seen the streams? Yes, must be. Millis? Millis is a maze. Maze means, you know, that corn, no? Moko, moko, okay? That is maze or millis. Then abided. What is to abide? Is to obey. But keep in mind the usage of these two words. We don't say we abide the rules that are said by our parents. We say we obey our parents. Although they mean the same thing, we use them, we cannot use them interchangeably. We abide by the laws that are set up by the country and we obey our parents. This is what you must learn in language. It is not important that you know the meaning, but how to use it in a language, in your sentences. Boyhood, everybody will know, a state of, or the time of being a boy, child. Illusion is just a wrong idea, it's a false, false idea or a... Um, Belief, false belief. Transitory is not permanent, it's temporary. Yearned is to have an intense feeling to have something. Students make the addition to your vocabulary list. As we learn the language, it's not enough that we learn the contained part. Equally important is the vocabulary. So jot it down, make your own dictionaries, as I said earlier. Let's move on to the next part of the lesson. But then, I slowly saw that not only I was not free, but my brothers and sisters were not free. I saw 
that it was not just my freedom that was curtailed, but the freedom of everyone who looked like did. That is when I joined the African National Congress. And that is when the hunger for my own freedom became the greater hunger for the freedom of my people. So Nelson Mandela slowly began to realize. What did he realize? That it was not only that he was not free. In the beginning, he wanted the freedom for himself. But now, he wants all his brothers and sisters to live free. Point, what did he do? He joined the African National Congress Party. And after joining this Congress Party, that is African National Congress Party, what happened, what changes took place in him? His own hunger became the greater hunger for the freedom of his people. There was a fire burning in him to fight for injustice. He wanted his people, the dark-skinned people, to live with dignity, to, with respect. And you know, this hunger, this desire, animated his life, motivated him, stimulated him, energized him. And then his life was transformed. Let us read that part. It was this desire for freedom of my people to live their lives with the dignity and self-respect that animated my life, that transformed a frightened young man into a bold man, that drew a law-abiding attorney to become a criminal, that turned a family-loving husband into a man without a home, that forced a life-loving man to live like a monk. I am no more virtuous or self-sacrificing than the next man, but I found that I could not enjoy even the poor and limited freedom I was allowed when I knew my people were not free. Freedom is indivisible. The chains on any one of my people were the chains on all of them. And the chains on all of them were the chains on me. So students, what did you understand from this paragraph? So Nelson Mandela had a desire that his people should live with dignity. And so he started struggling for it. And this animated his life. He was transformed. His total life was transformed. What was the transformation? He was a frightened man, became a bold man. So frightened man changed into a bold man. This was a transformation. From a law-abiding person to a criminal. He was a lawyer by profession. But now he's fighting against the system of apartheid. From a family-loving husband to a man without a home. And from a lively man to a monk. So many words here are the opposites, antonyms. They are called antonyms. Like frightened man, a bold man. These are the two opposite ones. So learn them. So this was a transformation. Like law-abiding man, the person who was following the laws all the time, now became a criminal. He's arrested. He loved his family, but then he has to compromise with it. He was a lively man, became a monk, a bhikshu. So this was a transformation in his life. And you know, the little and limited freedom that was given to him, he was not able to enjoy. Why? Because he says that freedom is indivisible. You cannot divide it. You cannot say, I am free, let it be my friends are not free. No. According to him, you cannot divide freedom. If the freedom is snatched away from one of his people, he feels that the chains are on all his people. And the chains on all his people are the chains on him. So if one of his people is not free, he is not free. That is how he explains that freedom is indivisible, cannot divide it. Let's go to the meaning part, vocabulary. 
curtailed. You know what is curtailed? The freedom was curtailed, it was reduced. Dignity. The state or quality of being worthy of honor and respect. Human dignity. Frightened, afraid or anxious. Monk, a member of a religious community of men typically living under the vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. Virtuous, having or showing high moral standards and indivisible means unable to divide. And this takes us to the last paragraph of this lesson, which is very important. I knew that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed. A man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred. He is locked behind the bars of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. I am not truly free if I am taking away someone else's freedom. Just as surely as I am not free when my freedom is taken from me. The oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. Students, who is an oppressor? Oppressor is a person who takes away somebody's freedom. And who is oppressed? The person whose freedom has been taken away. And both these oppressor and oppressed are not free. They are not living like humans. So they are not alike. You know, oppressor is burdened with all the worries with all the curses of the person and of the family members that he has tormented. He is bounded by the shackles of all those people whom he has tormented. He is locked behind the bars, bars of prejudice. He is narrow-minded. What is narrow-minded? The one who is not ready to accept the ideas from others is called a narrow-minded person. One whose mind is closed is a narrow-minded person. So, if I am taking somebody's freedom, I am also not free. I need to be freed. And so, Mandela says that oppressor and the oppressed, both are alike and both needs to be freed. So, this is the brief story of South Africa's hero, Nelson Mandela. Students, do you like history? History is, you know, really fun. It takes us closer to the world. It takes us closer to the events, to the happenings of the past. History makes us brave and courageous when we see the figures and the personalities who struggle and fight. So we have to learn history with fun. It helps us to know the past, prepares us for the future, and helps us to live in the present. So this lesson is moreover a history chapter. That's why I had to tell you something about history. Now, let us come to the evaluation part of the lesson. I have some important questions for you all, which are necessary from the examination point of view. Very important question of this lesson is what is apartheid? What is it? It's a political system that divides the people on the basis of the color of their skin. That was existing in South Africa for 46 years. What does Nelson Mandela thank the international leaders for? I told you in the previous session that the international leaders from 140 countries had participated in the ceremony, the inaugural ceremony. For the first time in the history of South Africa, such a huge gathering was there. Why had they come in such a huge number? To show their loyalty to the government, to show their respect because they always were against apartheid. They had no good relations with South Africa, but now they have shown their presence to show their loyalty. What ideals does Nelson Mandela set for the future of his country? What is the pledge, what is the promise that he gave to his people? 
that he is going to liberate them, free them from the continuing bondage of poverty, discrimination, deprivation, and sufferings. That is what he pledged to his people in his address, in his speech. And why were the two national anthems sung? The white sang, Nakosi Sikelele Africa, and the black sang, Dai Sting. Why were the two national anthems sung? To show the equality. As you know, his government was democratic and non-racial. So to give equal respect to both the races, the two national anthems were sung. Okay? Then come to the next question. How was the system of government in the first decade of the 20th century? In the year around 1901 to what was the system of government? There was a system called apartheid at that time. And it was one of the harshest and the most inhuman societies the world had ever seen. So that was the system of government in the first decade of the 20th century. Okay? And how was it in the last decade? The last decade it was overturned and replaced by what? By racial and democratic government. The government that will respect everyone irrespective of the color of their skin. Okay? Then, what did being free mean to Mandela as a boy and as a student? As a boy, what freedom did he enjoy? He was free to swim. He was free to run here and there. He was free to roast the millets and so on. And as a student, he wanted to stay out during nights. He wanted to read what he pleased and he wanted to go wherever he chose. That was the freedom, that meaning of the freedom for Nelson Mandela as a boy and a student. How did Mandela's hunger for freedom change his life? How, what was the change in his life? He became hungry for freedom. And from a frightened man, he became a bold man. From a law-abiding man, he became a criminal. From a family-loving husband to a how, person without a home, and so on. And what were the twin obligations, according to Mandela? The first one was obligation towards his family, his wife, children, father, mother. And the second was towards his people, his community, and his country. So these are the important questions. There are many more. You can go through the textbook, students. And now, apart from the content part, what else have we learned in this lesson is how to nominalize the adjectives and the verbs. I hope you remember. In the first session, we had covered up this. We have the noun here, deprivation. It's a noun formed from the verb deprive. Deprivation is a noun formed from the verb deprive. We have poverty, which is a noun which has been derived from the adjective poor. Discrimination from the verb discriminate. Brutality, again, from the adjective brutal. As I told you, nominalization is a process of changing or transforming the verb into a, or an adjective into a noun. You have this exercise, so there are many uh, nouns that are formed, like government, operation. These are all the nouns that are formed from the verbs. So try to collect them, make a list so that you can use them in your grammar exercises, okay? Now we have some phrases in the lesson. Phrase means, what's the difference between the phrase and a word? Word is just one word. And a phrase means more than one word without a verb. So we have some phrases here, not unmindful of, you're not aware of, not conscious of. Push to limits. Push to the last point of the ability. Keep me going. Help me continue to live in hope. These are the phrases that have, we have come across in the lesson. There are more phrases. Try to find them out. In addition to the vocabulary that we learned before, there are some more words which I want you all to jot down on your notebooks. That is decade. Decade is a period of 10 years. We have the word assembled means together. Like how we gather for assembly. Assembly is a noun form. Assembled is a verb. This is how you do. 
Then we have liberty, again, freedom. Privilege is advantage. Bondage is a state of being a slave. And we have awe. How is it pronounced? Awe. Feeling of respect, either of respect, fear, or wonder. Some more words we have bedecked, their chest bedecked, the military force is decorated. We have the word generosity, which is again a noun, a quality of being kind and generous. Triumph is a great victory. And the last word is potential, that is capacity to develop. So this is just a highlight for you from the Nelson Mandela's autobiography, A Long Walk to Freedom. Wasn't it interesting? If you are really interested, you can go through his book. I have no doubt that after reading the book, you will gain a lot of knowledge, a lot of courage, you will become brave. Okay, students, so I hope that I have been able to add something to your knowledge. Okay, students, thank you.